Hello and welcome back to live coverage of the Apex Gaming $20,000 Modern Invitational here in sunny Caldwell, Ohio. I'm Todd Tandy Anderson, joined by Ross Miriam. Say hi, Ross. Hi, Ross. We have six rounds of Swiss down and we are entering into the last stage of our Swiss of par portion of the tournament before we get to our top eight players. But, Ross, tell them the bad news. The bad news is our top eight is already decided. There yes. Were eight players at 5 1 or better, so they were all able to. Shake hands, take the intentional draw, and lock up their spot. So we have no winning in matches to bring you. Now, I just want to say, uh, the intentional draw, it can be a little off-putting to a new player. It's a very common thing in these tournaments. And I want to say the Wizards of the Coast is actually doing a great job at the professional level events where they have a, uh, a win cap where if you hit that, before the last round, you are automatically into the elimination rounds. At some point in the future, I would hope that tournament organizers are able to do something very similar. It's a little more complicated on the back end, but it's a great way to essentially remove the players from the field once they've already accomplished their goal of making the top eight. And honestly, now we get to just watch some fun, some fun games. Yeah, so we'll get to our top eight when the time comes. For now, we still have players playing for uh, quite a bit of money. Yes. This is a $20,000 tournament with prizes that go all the way down to 64th place. It's $300 for the top 16, 200 for 17 to 32, and 100 for 33 to 64. So hundreds of dollars still on the line for these players. And uh, my criterion for our first match was find a match that doesn't have any amulet or boros in it. Oh, yeah, so like uh, table 6, 7, we went, 8, We had to go all the nine, way down to 14. Ten, 14, table 14. 14. And these, record, these records of these players, this is like 4-1, 5-1, 4-2. They are 3-3. Three 3-3. And three. Three and three. Tough day for these players. It's uh, Dylan Pettit, who is one of our players who LCQ'd in yesterday on Selesnya Hilliod against Krista Oskopinski on Hollow One. We saw Krista earlier. Uh, if I'm not mistaken. She got whooped by Boros. I think it was yeah. Ryan Hayes. Yeah, we saw her run three against Ryan Hayes. So that's when she took her first loss, took a couple others later in the tournament. Uh, I know she lost the Hollow One Mirror, actually. Oh. Two Hollow One players in the tournament. Oof. One had to knock out the other. Crash course. All right, so that's the matchup. Christos Kapensky on Fear of Missing Out Hollow One versus Dylan Pettit on the Heliod Combo. Let's head on down to the feature match area as we watch the last round of Swiss here at the Apex Gaming Invitational. $20,000 on the line. These players, though, playing for top 16, top 32, a couple hundred bucks. Top 32, most likely. All right. So, Oskopinski going to be on your left on that back end, and then we got Pettit on your right on the back end. And we'll see if these players are keeping seven, mulliganing. Looks like Pettit's probably on the mulligan. Okay. See some lands. I see a spike feeder. Okay, mold of six, and we are ready to go. All right, turn one, Temple Garden tap, pass the turn. No one drop. Gonna go back to Christos Kapinski. Let's see what she can do. Cycle three right at the begin. Down 18. And I see a burning inquiry in her hand, so this could be an explosive turn. Gonna quickly fetch with Blood Saint Meyer. Gonna go get a land out of the deck. It's Blood Crypt untapped down to 15 already. Are we death shadowing? <laughs> Not quite. But this deck does deal itself quite a bit of damage with its lands. But it is the beatdown deck in basically every matchup, so not a, an issue for it. Okay, and just another Goyf, but a 2 3. And now a 3 4 with Mistress Bobble. We're going to go ahead and look at the top of Dylan's deck. So uh, Krista deciding to be patient with the Burning Inquiry because of all these baubles. She wants to cash those in first to try to dig towards some hollow ones. This also allows her to establish the Nether Goyf, and that will attack for a big chunk next turn after Burning Inquiry fills up her graveyard. Okay, second land here for Dylan is going to be Plains and Agatha Soul Cauldron. So that can shrink the Nether Goyf potentially and also threaten some combo stuff later on. Another bobble's going to get cracked. Dylan reveals, and now we're going to go back Chris's way, and we get to draw two cards. One for the bobble and one for turn. Another voice to 3-4, but that can shrink really quickly, thanks to the Soul Cauldron. I imagine this turn will start with Burning Inquiry. But maybe Krista has other plans. Go for something like a Fear of Missing Out, and then Inquiry turn 3 to set up Delirium. All right, looks like we are going to start off with the Burning Inquiry. So, both players going to draw three. 
Nether Goy's going to get real big. Now, player's going to lay out their hand. We're going to roll some dice to see which cards get discarded. With Burning Inquiry, both players are affected. And with the randomness attached to it, we've got a lot of dice rolling to figure out which of these cards are going to go to the graveyard. Chris had to roll two dice. Now, going to let Dylan roll some dice. That's six. Okay. Reroll. All right, and the six card. And now we're going to resolve on Dylan's side. Seven cards. Oh my. Seems yeah. rather inefficient. Five. Okay. Now we can just go down to one dice. One through six. Okay. And one through six, reroll five. Or reroll six. There we go. Chris, the discards a hollow one. A red card I can't tell, and a blood crypt. For Dylan, we are discarding Spike Feeder, which is excellent with the Agatha Soul Cauldron. Mounds of Land for Krista, Dragon Race Channeler, and Hollow One. Counting up the number of card types in the graveyard, it looks like just four. Artifact, Creature, Sorcery, Land. Yeah, that looks right. But there are multiple creatures, multiple, multiple artifacts, multiple lands. Sorcery is the only unique from the Burning Inquiry. So, had it wants to shrink the Nether Goyf, that will be the target. Yep, I'm going to do that. And so now, three damage comes across. Dylan down to 17. Hasn't taken any damage from his lands. So we're going to go back his way. <clears throat> Turn three. See what you got. On the mold of six, still pretty flush with resources. We're going to fetch with a wooded foothills to begin the turn. All right, with Spike Feeder in the graveyard, Agatha Soul Cauldron in play, is there any one creature he can grab that can gain infinite life? I don't know exactly what's in the deck. Uh, but Pettit doesn't have enough mana to go off immediately. I wasn't sure if there was one creature that was like, if you gain life, put a counter on something. And if you give that the spike feeder ability, I'm pretty sure it's infinite life. I know that there's some legacy creatures that can do it. I mean, the Heliod is what does that, but it's not a creature almost all the time in right. this deck. Right, right. Uh, Basking Broodscale doesn't do it. No. Okay. And Broodscale's relevant ability is a trigger. Okay. The Ranger Captain of Vios comes down for three mana. We go get Walking Ballista. And we're going to play it for zero. And we're going to put a 1-1 counter on the Ranger Captain of Vios. Yeah. And then with only three card types in the graveyard, we're going to use that counter to destroy the Dragon Race Channeler. We're going to pass back. Neat play there from Dylan Pettit. Able to keep some of the pressure off of himself. Christo shocks with a Blood Crypt. I don't think she took the two damage from it. She needs to first. Orcish Bowmasters, and this feels like another Burning Inquiry. Yeah, it is. So this will take out the Ranger Captain of Eos and allow Krista to attack freely. And set up lethal for next turn. Okay. So... Now time for more die roll. Card one. Card two. Card three. Now they should just be rolling this die once for which card Krista keeps. But that's not as fun. <laughs> okay, so Burning Aquarius resolves. We have three triggers of Orcish Bowmasters about to go off. Two lands and collect a company that discards for Pettit. Okay, and now we're going to recount how big the Nether Goyf is. I'm not sure if it grew any. We're going to sack the Ranger Cat Captain of Vios now, but all the damage is done. I think Dylan realizing this a little bit late. He put the creature in his graveyard like he was letting them resolve. Yeah, so I, I guess this means that, like, uh, two of the counters are going to 
to not be on the uh, the Orcish Bowmaster Orc Army. So we're going to call a judge over, and we're going to explain what happened. So let's get Orcish Bowmaster on the screen. Uh, this 2 cost 1-1 one, one says, uh, whenever enters or an opponent draws an additional card, they uh, get to make a Orc Army. And if you already have an Orc Army, it grows, and you get to deal 1 damage to any target. But if the target is removed, you do not get the Orc Army buff. So once we target the uh, Ranger Captain of Eos with three of the targets, well, we can sack it and then no growth. Bobble is the last card for Krista. All right, this is going to bug me forever. I need you to go tell them that Krista should be at 13 from a Blood Crypt. I was hoping that they would catch it, but she 100% should be at 13 life. All right, big attack here for eight. I'm going to pass it back. She had Street Wraith, Fetch Shock, and Shock. Looks like life totals got corrected there. Yeah, she played the Blood Crypt this turn, and I'm pretty sure she forgot to mark the two down. Very uh, excited about the Burning Inquiry. I'm not sure that it's going to matter, but I did want to make sure that the bookkeeping was correct. Thank you, sir. Land number four for Dylan. Going to fetch Basic Forest. What can we do for four mana? Is it just Coco? Like always? Coco forever? Yeah, um, I think collect a company into brood scale. Rosy Cotton of South Lane would do it. Okay, here's the Coco. I see Ranger Captain, but that's not going to help Pettit combo. Can he stay alive for a turn? And have a kill next turn. The Spike Feeder will help. Yep, that's four life up to 11, and Ranger Captain gets to go get a creature as well. We're going to find, looks like, Guide of Souls. And we're going to pass the turn back. Now, Agatha Soul Cauldron plus the Spike Feeder also means that we have the ability to use Ballista's ability. Okay. Yeah, so Pettit should be able to stay alive here. And potentially combo next turn. Now, I thought that Krista did a bobble, and she may have forgotten the bobble trigger, which maybe is why she's under a bit of duress right now. We're going to swing in with our two four-power creatures, it seems, and this is going to force a block or an activation of the spike feeder from Pettit. See how Pettit wants to block. Or if he even wants to block. Could just gain two life, and I think that's just fine. I'll, could also put a counter on the spike here with Cauldron, gain four life. Then he takes eight, goes to three, and Tarfire would still kill him because it would pump the Nether Goyf. I think Pettit wants to keep his creatures around. The Ranger Captain can protect his combo pieces next turn from removal. And the Spike Feeder itself is a combo piece a lot of the time. But, okay. I'm going to put the other Spike Feeder under the Soul Cauldron to pump up Ranger Captain so it can trade for Nether Goy or for Hollow One. Okay. And that's going to deal us four damage from the Nether Goy. And we're going to go down to three. And another Nether Goy from Krista. And we're going to pass back. Okay. This is the turn for Pettit. Need Heliod. Need Heliod. A couple blockers here would also suffice for buying another turn. I don't think he found it. Oh, yeah. We would have played it so quick. No cards in Krista's hand. Shields down. So. I think this is a tank figure out how to survive another turn.
I have another judge question here. Looks like we're calling over. Uh, we need some Oracle text on something. There's a lot of foreign cards on Pettit side of things, including, I believe, that spike feeder. So Krista just wants to know, what all abilities does it have? We can uh, move some counters around. We can gain some life. I believe that's it, but still a very strong card in spike feeder. There's Here's. a brood scale. And brood scale will potentially be able to get some counters on it, and that will make some tokens. Spike feeder can also move a counter from itself to the brood scale to give it uh, another trigger to make another 1-1. One, one. Yeah. Padded also can remove all of these counters for life. To oh, work. is that just Heliod? He just has Heliod? I guess he just wanted to make sure, yeah. in case it was broken up, he had more stuff on the battlefield. That's Rosy Cotton. The combo... All right, tell me what Rosy Cotton does. So, two and white for a 1-1. One, one. When it enters the battlefield, you make a food token. Whenever you make a food token, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control other than Rosy. So, the food token triggers to put a counter. You target the brood scale. Then the brood scale makes an 0-1, and that continues the loop with the Rosy Cotton. And you stop the loop by targeting something else. Uh, or responding to it now with the Walking Ballista. Okay, so Rosy Cotton of South Lane in tandem with those other creatures allows for infinite life and infinite 1-1s, and now Dylan Pettit up a game against Christos Kapinski. He, he wasn't going to use the counters for life. He was going to use them with Ballista ability to just kill Krista. That's fine, too. Yeah. Ballista, Ballista gotcha. They both work. All right, as these players are reaching into their sideboards for a little bit of help, let's uh, reach over to my man Ross. Tell me, how do you think Christos Kapinski approaches this unique Celestia Heliod combo deck with her Hollow One strat? So Krista's sideboard is three Blood Moon, two Ghost Vacuum, three Rough Tumble, one Surgical Extraction, four Thought Seize, and two Untimely Malfunction. Um, I think the Surgical will come in maybe the ghost vacuums to disrupt soul cauldron shenanigans um and i like the untimely malfunctions it's a card that not only destroys soul cauldron which is problematic it's a card that helps krista close the game by either getting by those blockers that heliod can make uh and you can even stop the combo for a turn by changing the target of a certain ability all right, on the other side of things, though, we do have Dylan Pettit's Heliod deck. This does have some really interesting cards in the sideboard. How do you think uh, he's going to be sideboarding against Chris's FOMO Hall of One Strat? So, Dylan's sideboard is three Damping Sphere, two Endurance, two Gaddictique, two Sanctifier and Vec, one Skyclave Apparition, three Sun Cleanser, and two Veil of Summer. Certainly the Graveyard Hate will come in. Endurance and Sanctifier are great. And the Skyclave Apparition, I imagine, will come in as well to give him at least a little bit of interaction against these... Uh, aggressive creatures. While these players are finishing up sideboarding, I'd like to take this time to say thank you to the sponsors for Apex Con and this weekend's festivities. Thank you so much to Ultimate Guard. Ultimate Guard is the industry leader when it comes to TCG supplies from the uh, Katana Sleeves to the Archive Deck Box. Make sure to check your local game store today for Ultimate Guard products. Thank you to Wings Etc., Grill and Pub, family-friendly restaurant with sports on TV. We always have a good time when we go up there, and we think you will too. Thanks to SpiceRack.gg. SpiceRack is a piece of tournament software. If you check them out, if you want to run uh, tournaments yourself or find tournaments in your local area, check out SpiceRack.gg today. And last but not least, Ghost Energy keeps us hydrated and energized on these long tournament weekends. I like the mango one. I'm just checking over sideboards again. I'm leaning more towards bringing in Thoughtsies for Krista and leaving some of the graveyard hate out. Okay. There's not a lot of graveyard stuff going on in Petted Stack. It looked like it in that game one. But... Is it basically just Soul Cauldron junk? Yeah. And uh, you're going to want Thoughtsies against Collected Company. And the Thoughtsies also lets you know what combo pieces Petted has drawn. Because sometimes. You know, they can draw Brood Scale and Rosy Cotton. Sometimes they can draw Heliod and Spike Feeder. And if they've only played one creature, you're not sure if that's bait or if it's a card that they're planning on comboing with. So the information from Thoughtseize can be invaluable in this matchup. All right, these players are just about ready for game number two. Just a reminder, here at the Apex Gaming Home Store in Caldwell, Ohio, we are in our last round of Swiss for the 20K Invitational Featuring the modern format, we've seen tons of decks 
uh, today, but mostly Boros Energy and Amulet Titan. Well, I know there are four Amulet Titan decks looking to make it into the elimination rounds. How many Boros Energy decks are there? Is it, is it just Boros versus Amulet today? Uh, two Boros Energy decks. Okay. In the top eight. So that accounts for six. What are the other two decks looking like to be in our elimination rounds? It's uh, Brendan Lane on Demir Murktide and Jonathan Fesmeyer on Hollow One. Heck yeah, Hollow One into the top eight. That's pretty good stuff. Well, we have a Hollow One match here about to be underway for round number seven. Christos Kapinski will be on the play. Let's see if either of these players wants to take a mulligan or keep their sevens. Looks like Chris is going to keep, and Dylan going to send it back. Better start already for Krista in this game. I see a burning inquiry. Could have a really explosive first few turn draws. Yeah. She had a pretty solid start in that uh, game one as well. Didn't back it up with any disruption. She has some removal in the main three fatal push and two tar fire and a molten collapse. So going to be looking to have one of those to try to break up these combos from Pettit as well as that fast clock. Good call. All right, Pettit here. Getting ready to draw the six card hand. Hope this one's a little bit better. I see a Guide of Souls, and I see a Seiju, a Utopia Sprawl. Looks like we're going to keep. Okay. Game will be underway here in just a moment once we finish them all. Here we go. Oskopinski, turn one fetch. 17, Finding Blood Crypt. I love the white-bordered hollow ones. I don't know why, but I do. What's your uh, opinion on white-bordered... Like a fake white border. Not a fan. What about real white border? Uh, fine, but still not a fan. Yeah. I remember when 7th edition came out, they had a black border foil 7th edition, and the Birds of Paradise was like 100 bucks. Thought that was cool. All right. Turn one for Krista. Here's another goyf, just a one-two, but it'll grow quickly. Back to Dylan Pettit. Turn one, Besaju. Here's Arbor Elf pulling out Utopia's Roll to the front, but that's no forest. Reign of Glory in a turn two, we go Orcus Bowmaster down your Arbor Elf. Man, it turns out you still can't play one toughness creatures in this format. It's very difficult. <laughs> no, you cannot. Lush Portico is the land for Dylan Pettit. That's a good target for Utopia Sprawl. Let's see if he wants to deploy that here. Could have been quite good along with that Arbor Elf, but thanks to Orgish Bowmaster, that is no longer possible. Here's another Arbor Elf. We'll see if Krista has another answer. Can go back her way. Plays Mountain. Taps two. Boom. Bowmaster Deuce. That'll do. Snap him up. And Burning Inquiry. This is so much damage. This is just lethal, right? I don't know. It's plus six. So that's going to be an eight power arc army plan six damage. That's already 14. Yeah, so the we need the... Is 15. The Nether Goyf is 16. We need the Nether Goyf to grow a little bit. Yeah. And the Nether Goyf is already grown from the Inquiry. So Krista needs two other types. Okay, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Okay, now one through seven, we need to get another dice out. Just look at Krista's cards and see if Dylan's dead. <laughs> you never know. What if Dylan has endurance? Three. All right. So once this resolves, let's count them up. We got land, sorcery. Um... There's definitely a land. I think the one of those is a Dragon Rage Channeler, so I think that's at least three. And then we're going to deal six damage with the two Bowmasters, three from each of the Burning Inquiry, and then it grows up to an 8-8, eight, eight, and then 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. It's, so it, it be might lethal. be one short. Oh, oh Detectus okay. Phoenix. Yeah, this that's should be lethal. Land of the enchantment. Creature, sorcery, and... Yeah. Is that an artifact beneath the DRC? 
I believe it was a Bloodstained Mire, but I'm Mire, not 100%. Okay. But I believe that this is a lethal attack. Yeah, 13 damage, pet, packs it in. Powerful start there for most Kapinski. Not only had a Bowmaster for Arbor Elf, had a second Bowmaster for Arbor Elf into the Explosive Burning Inquiry, and wow. Let's turn 3 kill you on the play while killing the creatures you play it on your two turns. Is that good? Can't that tell. Was... Can't That's how you draw it up when you're playing this Hollow One deck. Yeah, I mean, the, the old versions of Hollow One were like, oh, turn one and bring Inquiry. Let's deploy a bunch of Hollow Ones on turn one and see if it's good enough. Now, we're casting Burning Inquiry after we already have Bowmaster in play. Yeah, and just in case we needed Orcish Bowmasters to be even better, now it's a combo card. Great. Love it. Always has been. You ever <laughs> played it with uh, Wheel of Fortune or whatever? In, uh, uh, in Cube? In Cube. I think I got it. Hit with Time Twister once when a Bowmaster's in play. I wanted to throw up. Take seven, please. Okay, players here quickly shuffling for game number three, which should be underway soon. Let's see if these players want to keep their opening sevens. Hollow One. Hollow One has a chance to win the Invitational still. Maybe not in the hands of Krista Oskopinski, but maybe in spirit... On her side of things, she'll be rooting on fellow Hollow One player in top eight. Jonathan Fiesmeyer. Pet it. Takes a look at the opener. Going to keep. Both players are going to keep. Turn on the Utopia Sprawl. Can't use Blood Muster to take that one down. Let's see what Crystal wants to start with. Cycle Street Race down to 18. Marsh Flats Fetch should be down to 15. Assuming Blood Crypt. I think that's the grab. It always is. All right, see if we have that Nether Goyf 3 for 3 on turn number 1. Oh, Dragon's Race Channeler. Okay, pass Still back. very good one drop. So two very good starts for these players. Now, can Pettit put something like a Heliod on the battlefield? Very difficult to remove, but still threatens a potential combo. Mm -hmm. Tumble Garden going to take two, passing the turn. What can we do at three mana? Is this just Endurance? Has to be. The only instance in the deck are Collected Company and Endurance. Nothing in the sideboard jumping out, just the endurances. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, Dylan Pettit with his hand on the table in terms of representing, but we're going to quickly fetch him a mountain here. It's Christos Kapinski, and we'll see what turn number two brings. Mm. Unless Krista has a removal spell, she has to be careful not to achieve delirium, or at least go to post combat before doing so. Okay, well, it looks like we are going to go ahead and cast the Burning Inquiry, and Pettit can cast the uh, Endurance here in response, or he can wait and try to trick Krista. But I think casting it now makes sense, because if you discard it, you might just lose. Yeah, you can't, you can't lose it. So you let the DRC <laughs> triggers resolve, tag as much of the graveyard as you can. All right, so we shuffle them up, they go to the bottom, and then we'll resolve the Burning Inquiry, but... Uh, it, we can discard three and hit Delirium, and if we do that, the D DRC has to shove in. Yeah, so it's out of Krista's hands at this point. She has to hope Burning Inquiry helps her out. She wants to keep that hollow one and any others that she drew and uh, not get to four types. Now, there is some chance that she has already announced that it's second main phase because she expected the Endurance and didn't want to run into it with uh, the Burning Inquiry. But I don't know for sure. Players do communicate verbally quite a bit that we can't hear. And that's a, a weird one. Oh my. Oh my. Oh my. We're in a loop. Okay, now go down to one dice. Thank the load. Okay. And reroll again. There we go. Three cards discarded for both players. Just put your cards down and pick three. <laughs> That's what I do. I just say shuffle them up and just pull three out of my yeah. hand. It's just so much faster. Okay, so FOMO 
I think is in there. Yeah, it's, I think it's two Fear of Missing Out and an Orcish Bowmasters for the discards. So that is three types. See a Molten Collapse as well. So that's Sorcery, so that... Burning of Course. I think we're good. I think it's two, three. I think it's three. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. It's Molten Collapse, Fear of Missing Out, Bowmasters. Okay. And we play a Hollow one as well for free, thanks to the three cards discarded. We're going to go back to Dylan. Well, that went as well as possible for Krista. Got her Hollow one, didn't lose her DRC. And Pettit is still a ways away from comboing. Here's Agatha's passing of the turn. Going to go back to Krista. Nothing scary for two mana. Maybe a Besaju on the Hollow One is the only thing I can think of. Okay, this is the new card that destroys artifacts. What's the name of it? Indeed, that is a uh, untimely malfunction. Yeah, so untimely malfunction is fun is functioning as the new, uh, you know, abrade or disenchant or what have you. It's great for redirecting Goblin Charbelcher's activated ability while also being a uh, a split card. Does three different things. So we're gonna kill Soul Cauldron, exiles the Nether Goyf. Yeah. And then puts a counter on the Endurance, and now Endurance checks Hollow One as well as the DRCs. Yeah, but I think this is now they are, have to attack, and so if we attack in, we're going to get in 7 damage. Yeah, Untimely Malfunction is an instant, so that is a fourth type. There's now Creature, Enchantment, Sorcery, Instant. There is, uh, yeah, it's a Detector's Phoenix. So I think Krista is going to bestow the Phoenix, take herself down below Delirium, and pump up the Hollow One so it can attack into the Endurance. Okay. Yeah, it is bestowing, so we will trigger two more times. So there's still a chance. If we, I guess we can choose not to mill. Yeah. But we still get to look no matter what. We're going to put that on the Hollow One. So should be tapped out here from that as well. Yeah, I'm hoping it just gets corrected, because that Blood Crypt should definitely be tapped. Two lands yeah. go to the graveyard, so now it's... That's still Delirium, right? Because she left the Fear of Missing Out? Land, enchantment, creature... Maybe intentional. Maybe yeah. wants to get in there for extra damage, and Hollow One for six. We're going to take nine down to nine. One Darcy down. Here we go. Still get in three damage, and she gets to actually use the surveils. She put two lands that she doesn't want to draw into the graveyard. Right. It's either keep the lands on top and draw dead cards for two draws, or lose a Darcy for plus three damage. And so Fetch is going to put Pettit to eight. That'll get the Lush Portico. Something really magical about Burning Inquiry. You can just steal all of your opponent's best cards. Has so many cool combos. Really neat one. If I'm not mistaken, it was only ever printed in a core set. Flush Portico puts Utopia Sprawl into the graveyard. Pettit draws. Head and hands. Thinking real hard. The winner of this match likely cashing. Top 32. We're going to play Horizon Canopy and sack it immediately and draw a card. That is a good sign if you're Krista. And there's That's the brute skill. brute skill. Two mana, two, two. You can put a counter on it. Make a one, one blocker. Let's get brute scale on screen. This is a Baskin brute scale. Relatively new card. Uh, has adapt. And whenever a counter gets put on it, you get a one, one creature. And, or an O one creature. And that creature can be sacked for mana. There's tar fire. Going to go face. Pet it down to six. Interesting that Krista would do that now, as opposed to attacking first, because Pettit wouldn't know that he has to chump block the Hollow One to stay alive. Mm. Now he does, and if he and if he plays around it, you can then just tar fire the Brute Scale and prevent any potential combo. As is, Pettit will fall to six from the tar fire. Krista will attack with both creatures. Pettit will chump block with the Reach Endurance, and go to three, and then he can kill. Still combo on the table. Okay. What's that last card, Krista? Nothing special. Gonna go back. Dylan Pettit. One more turn. Does he have Rosie Cotton? <gasps> Coco off the top. <laughs> we got a lot of looks. Heliod plus Spike Jeez, Feeders Infinite. Guide of Souls. And Heliod. 
That'll do it. Oh. Um. Oh wait, no, because the Heliod's not a creature. He won't gain life. Yeah, he doesn't. So it doesn't, doesn't trigger. Start. It's so close. Oh, Dylan. Dylan is so close, buddy. Oh man. Ah, uh, Heliod not being a creature before five devotion is the key here. Wow, and packs it in. Dylan Pettit defeated. Chris Oskopensky moves to four and three, likely making our top 32 and earning herself 200 bucks in the process. Congratulations to her on the victory, but we still have some magic being played.